Welcome back to Experimental. This is day 22 and my fifth video. As always, you can follow the links on the right side of YouTube and get yourself caught up if you haven't seen my previous videos. So in this video, I've changed the placement of my microphone and my speakers. I'm hoping this will allow my voice to come across clear while eliminating some of the tinny noise that the theremin produced in the recordings. If this doesn't work, I am open to suggestions from other people specifically those who have made recordings and videos of their theremin on how you have your microphone and your speakers placed in order to create an accurate representation of the sound. So since the last video, I've actually had time to practice, which I was happy about. And over the weekend, I actually went to two parties, and in both cases, the friends who were hosting these parties were already familiar with the theremin before I got mine. So I took mine along, so that people could see it and attempt to play it. It was fun. I got to see other people learn. I got to teach them what little bit I've learned on how to play the theremin, as well as badger them into attempting to play Ode to Joy, so that I don't feel nearly as bad about my first attempt as I once did, having seen theirs. So, in the last week, as I mentioned, I got time to practice. Since I've developed, since I started using the constant tuning of setting my zero beat the lowest note, between the, where the antenna and the casing meet, I've found my playing has improved a lot. It's a lot more consistent than it used to be. In the last week, I've also decided to finish watching up Thomas Grillo's instructional videos on how to play the theremin. Again, they'll be linked to the right-hand side if you want to see them. After three weeks of playing the theremin, some of what he talked about I'd already learned on my own, like the importance of warming up a theremin, and the importance of a proper stance, and some of it was stuff that I haven't yet got to, like how to play notes accurately the closer you get to the antenna, but I haven't had time to practice that yet. So the warming up I figured out on my own and I was going to talk about. I found out that for the first 10 to 20 minutes of the theremin being on, at least this model, it's warming up. I don't know what inside is warming up, but something is. And in that time, the zero beat, the lowest note, will actually shift from where I have it tuned outwards. So I would turn on my theremin, set the lowest note here, and I would play for a bit. And then when I stopped, I'd check the zero beat, and it had moved out. And I'd have to retune it. I'd play for a bit, and then I'd check, and it had moved out again. I found after about 15-20 minutes, this stopped. So now I just turn on my theremin before I'm going to play it, leave it for a bit, and then come back to it. I also learned the importance of stance. Because if you're standing just as you would normally in most cases, your body makes small adjustments to keep your balance. You're very slowly wobbling backwards and forwards, left and right. And in a space-controlled instrument like the theremin, this is enough to change the pitch. So I started standing in a more stable position. Watching other people's videos, I found mention of different martial arts stances. I was born and raised in Toronto. I just stand as if I'm on the subway, because if this posture can keep me balanced going 50 kilometers an hour down a tunnel with people brushing against me, it can keep me pretty stable just standing on a floor that's not moving. One thing that came up at the party someone asked me about is they noticed whenever I went to play the theremin, I would put my left hand on the far end of the volume antenna, and I'd put my right hand against the pitch antenna. Specifically, I put the last knuckle of my middle finger against the antenna, and then I would step back. I do this for two reasons. It puts me in the zero beat position, so that the theremin produces no note, even if I'm not holding the volume antenna down. It also establishes a consistent range between my body and the antenna. So just as I set a consistent range of notes here, this helps me know where that consistent range starts in this space because if I just stood behind the theremin I could be a few centimeters forward backwards left or right and that would change how far out or how far in my arm has to be to hit a specific note so by standing in the same spot each time I make this consistent again and the more consistency you have when attempting to play a theremin the better off it's going to sound I've been working on a few other songs other than Ode to Joy, which in the future I hope to record. Um, they're difficult to learn, though, because Ode to Joy 
has the advantage of every note in the song, pretty much. It's just one note higher or one note lower than the one you just played. So you always have a reference point from where you last were. Most songs, you jump up or down several notes or even an octave. And that means I have to get used to going from low notes to high notes back in between without the little references of it's just a little bit higher or it's just a little bit lower that I get to learn with Ode to Joy. So with all of that, I'm going to attempt to play Ode to Joy again at the end of my third week. So that was definitely far better than it was when I first started. It was more consistent, which is something I've been working on. I'm not drifting keys as much as I used to. And even though it wasn't perfect, I don't think anyone would have trouble recognizing that I'm playing Ode to Joy anymore. So I thank you for joining me, and I hope you'll watch my next video.